You're listening to a podcast of Relatively Speaking on MPB Think Radio. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Good morning. This is Relatively Speaking, the show all about you and your family. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Got mental health? Well, seriously, when you hear the mental health term, do you know what that means? The truth is your mental health affects who you are, what your physical health will be, whether or not you will have successful relationships, and even the outcome of your children. So, my question to you, listeners, is why is it so hard for us to ask for help when we need it in the area of mental health? I really want to hear from you today because this is such an important topic, and I I just will have to point out the fact that an Some of our other Southern Remedy shows, often people will call in and talk about their asthma, their cardiac disease, their hypertension. It's so easy to call in and say what's going on and to ask for help. But I do find that we have a little bit harder time getting people to call in and ask for help when it comes to mental behavioral health. So why is that? Why, first of all, why do you think that is the case? What is stopping people? Do you think it's the stigma? Do you think people think having um, anxiety or depression is a sign of weakness? Or do you think that it's a sign that you are perhaps imperfect and you're supposed to be perfect? I want to hear from you. Give us a call. Have you ever struggled with that, knowing that you probably needed help, but you just couldn't say it out loud? You just couldn't allow yourself to let that phone call happen or that ask happen? Uh, Give us a call, 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 1-877-672-7464. Or you can send an email to... Um, MPB, to pardon me, family at mpbonline.org. Let me, let me just talk to you a little bit about why I felt like we had to bring this topic up today. First of all, we're rounding out Mental Health Month, and yes, we pay attention. May is Mental Health Month, and that's an important time, and it's important for us to talk about it in general. But it doesn't just happen in a month. Mental health issues are so common. One in five American adults will have a diagnosable, a diagnosable mental health condition in any given year. Um, Adolescents are even higher at times. Upwards of 40% will have a diagnosable. Now, there are all ranges, mild, moderate to severe, but but if you talk about that um, in the whole context of all mental health issues, and it is so very common. The highest rates, I'll just tell you, higher among women than men, I wonder if that's real or it's because women are more likely to talk about it. That's one question I have. It's also higher among biracial individuals and LGBT individuals. And I think perhaps the reasons for that may be obvious if you think about it. Um, The other, but I'd like to hear from you about what you think about that. The other thing is it's lowest among um, American Asians. Which is a question in my mind. Is it because they truly are more resilient or is it because they are not allowed to admit that they have any kind of mental health issues? I don't know that. I'm throwing out some questions that I have for you because um, I find it interesting that 
that as we look at the millions and millions across the U.S. with mental health issues, 51 million in 2019, and perhaps more in 2021, um, the, the numbers are, to me, staggering. We know that it's still very difficult to fund the help that is needed. But the other issue is, I'm going to say it again, many times we have difficulty asking for help. So why is that? Um, often what happens is as we're looking forward at, you know, what's going on, even people with serious mental illness will not be able to stop and ask for help. Well, I see our, our phones are already ringing. I'm excited about that. And I want to go ahead and I think we need a minute. Okay. I'm Line two first. Okay, let's go to Craig um, in Biloxi. Hi, Craig. Hi. Uh, I was wondering how I could get someone else to to get um, mm-hmm. mental treatment and, and how often uh, physical disabilities. This person just had COVID, and, and mm-hmm. my research has said psychosis is a part of problems. But other, there are other other issues that are uh, physically related to your mental condition. Right, right, Craig. Um, that's such a good question, and I'm hoping I'm glad you brought that up because many times when there's somebody that you really care about and you know something's going on and you're watching a downward spiral go on, you you want to get them to get help, but. Um, Sometimes it's hard to get people to move or to admit. So the first thing, um, first of all, let me address your question about COVID. You're absolutely right. Um, Many people who have supposedly recovered from COVID-19, from the acute illness, are finding that they're having many problems. Um, And and the research is not very clear on exactly why is that. It, it seems something to do with an inflammatory process, maybe. But um, many people are feeling chronic fatigue, chronically fatigued, um, that their mood is just not quite there with them. Um, sometimes they feel sad or depressed or sad or depressed because they feel so tired all the time and don't have the energy that they originally had. Um, and and like you said, some of the physical issues that can go along are that chronic shortness of breath, um, maybe some cardiac issues um, with COVID also have been discovered. So um, with that said, the very first thing, Craig, when you when you want somebody to get help, I think the first thing you need to do is when things are calm, to sit down with them and say, I really need to talk with you. I'm really concerned that something is going on. You're not back to your old self. And I think that we need to get some help. Now, what you might do, especially if this is a post-COVID type occurrence where they were not like that prior to their COVID-19 illness, uh, what I would do is suggest that they go to their primary care provider, an internist, and and say, um, and, you know, you could even offer to go with them. Because sometimes people are not even seeing what, uh, they don't realize what's going on with them. So it might be worthwhile to say, I'm happy to go with you. And, you know, to go in and and talk about the feelings that are ongoing. Because this has been very common, very common, Craig. Um, Do you think that you could talk them into first going to a primary care provider? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I also uh, heard that people have less symptoms if you get a, after you've had COVID, if you get an an immunization, a shot, a COVID shot. Um, So, but I don't know if that's going to help or not. But this person has switched to a lot of drama. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah. And un- unfortunately, that <laughs> is self-destructive. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's very common for people not to not to see what's going on. And so I would I would suggest now one the the. Certainly, they're still saying you should get vaccinated if you have COVID-19, but you should wait, I think it's 60 to 90 days after your recovery from the illness. But I would um, first go to a primary care provider, say, let's go get a good checkup. Let's make sure if you, if they're having a lot of drama around all their symptoms, then they need to be seen. And sure. then and and then to decide whether or not further physical um, issues need to be investigated, or if this is is truly all a mental health issue. But there's no shame in that. And to remind them that it's okay. Um, there's no shame in in um, asking for help, no matter in what direction it is, because help is out there, and people are prepared and understanding things better. So that's what I would suggest. I hope that yeah. helped. If I can help this person, it will help my mental issues, that's for sure. Okay, I'm (laughs) going to get off the air now. Okay, thanks, Craig. Thanks for that. And it will. Um, You know, what Craig just said, I don't know if you heard his last um, comment, but he said it'll help his mental health issues. And the truth is that... When you are not doing well, often others around you are also not doing well because they care about you, because they are feeling differently, because you may be treating them differently. All right. We're going to go to our first break. We're talking about getting help for mental um, issues that are ongoing. It's so common. Why do we have such a hard time? We have two callers on the line. You guys hang on. We'll be right back. This is Relatively Speaking, and I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. Dr. Susan Buttress. Parents are a child's first teacher. Children make connections to the growing world around them through back and forth interactions. Parents and other caregivers can help children learn communication and social emotional skills by talking, reading, and singing each day. More information at MississippiThrive.com. This is MPB Think Radio, Mississippi Public Broadcasting. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking and I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. And today we're talking about mental health issues. It's so common. One in five, 51 million, 46 to 49 percent of adolescents have issues, but so many don't ask. And despite the fact that we've come a long way regarding the destigmatization of getting into therapy, still having trouble. So today, We are talking about why and what we can do about it, how we can help ourselves and how we can help others. So let's jump back to the phones. We have Raul in Vicksburg. Hi. Thanks for calling. Hi, Dr. Buttress. Uh, I have a few ideas uh, that I have found out from my research as well as the experience of those close to me. Uh And I wanted to share those with your audience. Uh, The first thing is traditionally men are supposed to be macho and not express their feelings. Mm. Uh, Not only among men, but even close to, you know, their family. And women, when when they're suppressing their emotions and finally let them out, you know, they're called hysterical in many countries. (laughs) Right. So both of those are taboo or, you know, uh, uh, people look down upon them as a weakness. But we know now that depression that lasts a long time, not a couple of days or a couple of weeks, like following the loss of somebody or something happening in an office situation, 
but that lasts for months and years mm-hmm. and is accompanied by physical symptoms such mm-hmm. as you know digestive problems say sleep uh, uh, lack of sleep or loss of weight and so forth or even over getting obese they are all you know are considered as you know clinical depressions they are basically a disease and just like any other disease that we go to see a doctor these diseases need you know uh, help with a uh, practitioner of that particular medical discipline unfortunately many of our insurances uh, they don't provide for mental health issues until recently i don't know now how many of the private ones are secondly uh, you know uh, we have in our society in america right now and also in a lot of other countries too now with the modern uh, situation and you know uh, globalization and all there's a lot of pressure on men to perform mm-hmm. perform not only during their regular hours but over time and all because that is the only way they will get ahead right and you know so if you put your family and other you know other normal situations you know you can equal far or you know ahead and we can say whatever people look down and they figure they assume that you have to put your family below your career which contributes to a lot lot of stress yeah especially absolutely you know, and so what that is creating is additional stress and also we don't have much physical exercise neither in the schools nor you know uh, in other settings that don't necessarily uh, you know encourage this yeah so we have uh, you know two fold uh, pressure on people and that naturally causes you know depression and many times depression is accompanied by anxiety as as you know yeah and yeah. so th- those are the causes i think in our general society as you said depression you know uh, uh, is something like a co- common cold it's uh, about one one in four or one in five people experience during their lifetime and many times it's not just one episode they may undergo treatment but they also it's recurs we have to prepare for its recurrence that's that's and, exactly right ral and i'll just say that you you've brought up so many good points i want to make sure that our listening audience um heard about three of them because I want to make sure that we point them out. One, um the macho male thing. It's it's not okay to cry, it's not okay to be stressed, it's not okay to say I'm overwhelmed. Um women can more easily say that and talk about it. So, um unfortunately, the suicide rate in men is higher than in women for that very reason i think what happens is it gets all bottled up and they just can't get it out until um there's an explosion literally and so really important for us as a society to quit doing that to men period we've got to stop it that's wrong it's not the right way to bring up our male children um uh, another point that you brought out is the lack of taking time off. I see men and women on their jobs uh doing that and thinking that even when they are quote on vacation they still have to check emails and check text and respond to what's going on. Um there is we've done this um and we'll probably do it again uh a show on the value of taking time off in vacation. It's really important to unplug and let yourself sort of diffuse and take a deep breath and take a real rest and read just a trash book if that's what you want to do do something that's just not for any reason other than for relaxation very very important and then the the final thing i want to bring up uh raul and before we go to our next caller is to just point out um another thing that that you said and to, you know one ask for help um and and to be able to talk about what's going on and does it does it mean that when you ask for help that you are asking for medication no many times mild depression and anxiety both can be treated with talk therapy cognitive behavioral therapy mindfulness therapy there's several good ways we can go into that happy to talk about medicine but so many times that's not the only answer you mentioned that prolonged grief 
piece um, that that really grief is normal. You should be sad when you lose a loved one. Um, but for it to be prolonged, if you're finding yourself six months into it where you still have no energy and are not able to move and can't do anything but cry, you likely need help to try to step through that. So all great points, as usual, Raul. I appreciate your call. So May, may I just add one more thing? Um, sure. About, uh, uh, the point I want to make is, uh, yeah, you, you can't, even if you talk with your family or close friends or whatever, you really need professional help. Mm-hmm. And like you mentioned, cognitive behavioral therapy really helps a lot of people. And the other point I want to make is there are many modern medicines that, uh, you know, uh, we know about serotonin levels and all. So those are really like miracles. So it's like taking them under clinical supervision is like uh, between, you know, it's like a heaven. You know, it's like suddenly there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you have explored a right. whole new. That is something I want your audience to know in case they are not already in there. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're right. It, it can, um, a medication when really needed can make an incredible world of difference. So thank you for that. Okay, let's go to our next caller. Um, Our caller is anonymous, um, somewhere in Mississippi, and that's all. So hi, thanks for calling in, and and I am happy for you, any caller, to be anonymous. I completely get it. So, Well, I have to do that because of my career. So, uh, and the very things that you're talking about, uh, part of the reason, oh, the prolonged, I've, I've got several issues that I'm personally dealing with that, so I, I'm speaking from personal experience and also experience of other people in my career. Uh, mm-hmm. I work in law enforcement primarily, but I have also had, uh, have or had before I lost my insurance, uh, I did uh, personal protective service for high profile clients and uh, diamond brokers and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. I lost my insurance because I was diagnosed with uh, PTSD and anxiety issues. What? Can't, can't can't find an underwriter. Well, they don't want somebody with a gun walking around with PTSD or or uh, anxiety issues. Oh my uh, goodness! But also, see how unfair on, that is. On, on top of that, on top of that. I'm also a pilot. I lost my pilot's license for the very same reason. Oh my goodness! You cannot you cannot have a private pilot pilot's license in the United States if you're diagnosed with PTSD or an anxiety uh, condition, or if you're taking many, most of the medications that help with those issues. Wow! So these those, these are not um, these are real world problems. Yeah. That yeah. I tell you what, if I'd have known what was going to happen, I would have kept my mouth shut. Yeah. Now, my family life is a thousand times better. My my feel a thousand times better. But my financial world just took a hit that put me into more anxiety and into more depression. Yeah. Yeah. And with more issues to yeah. deal with because, and I actually went for an evaluation because of work because I was involved in an incident where someone was unfortunately lost their life. Mm hmm. So I had to go in for an evaluation, and in that evaluation, I was diagnosed. And mm-hmm. when I became diagnosed, my world crumbled. Um, so there's a real – the government in mm-hmm. and of itself needs to stay out of it, mm-hmm. period. Mm-hmm. Because as everything that the government touches, they get involved, and it destroys people's lives. So there's uh, – I don't know. The, the, like, I'm telling you the reality of the last – Two years of my life. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and there's, you can, <laughs> if I had a if I had a quadruple bypass surgery, okay, I wait one year, I get medically cleared by my doctor, I can get my pilot's license back. You never get cleared of a, D, a PTSD diagnosis. You always it's there. That's it. The end. Wow. So that's it. You can never say, well, we cured it. I because it, okay it. 
it is so hard for me to even believe this. Thank you so much for calling in and it. sharing this. I will. I will. And and um, first of all, let me say, before I go further, thank you for your service. I know this has been an incredibly difficult time um, because there's so much controversy going on. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you have done. And 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 I'm so happy that you did have the guts to seek help because it does take guts. But well, you, I've, I've continued. I, I could have went with the the uh, evaluation and just moved and just and then went back to work and not. But I I I, I recognize it and and hit some points. And I have I've got one of the best doctors on the planet. I love him. He's he's incredible. Oh. And. Uh, and he has helped me. I, I don't. Every time I go see him, I leave. I walk. I, I, I weights off my shoulders. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm speaking from personal experience. Had I known what I was going to lose, I wouldn't have done it. But your family life would have suffered so much, right? So. Okay. Um, but how am I going now? Now, but now, now, how am I going to continue uh, their quality of life of? Uh, I've got daughters that are at the age where they are needing vehicles. That I've got, I've got a, a 14, 15, well, actually 15, 16, 17 year old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have to, I have to provide vehicles for college for all that, and yeah. and I have my income has been cut by 60 percent. Yeah. So. That I would. So yes, I, there's one aspect of it is is going uphill. The other aspect is going downhill. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, roughly, hard, terribly downhill. Yeah, yeah. I I hear what you're saying, and I just it's hard. Have first of all, have you talked to your physician about how is there any way to now that you're doing well and everything's going well um, that that can be taken off your diagnosis. Now it might not get once, your once once you once you click it on the the application for the for the license is there forever. It doesn't go away. Wow. Sounds like and we insur- need some and, changes happening. And and, yeah. and insurance companies once <laughs> once they get it, ooh, no, you're too high risk. Yeah. Yeah, that's not supposed to be so. There's supposed to be parity. You're not supposed to lose insurance. Um, well, I'm not talking about health insurance. I'm talking about liability insurance. For oh, business. liability. Got it. Yeah, well, because you that doesn't make you sense operate, either. You, you can't operate at the security <laughs> without being bonded and insured. So, so this is typical. This is typical of the way our society sets things up. Okay. You get, they would rather have a depressed, anxious person without treatment out there um, yep. than somebody was, who has had the yeah. guts, the chutzpah to get precise out there argument. to get, I mean, it's ridiculous. I made the precise argument. I made that yeah. precise argument with the insurance companies. Yeah. So you're telling me because I'm trying to do it the right way and do things the right way and make things better, you're going to just throw me out the door. Well, um, I will just say, Anonymous, I'm sure you're not the only one out there who has gone through this. The system is wrong. It's neg- negatively, it's punishing people who are doing the right thing and who are trying to take care of themselves. And exactly as you said, someone who has had bypass surgery is still at risk of had it, having an acute myocardial infarction. Um, which could be very dangerous in flight, very dangerous in many walking other around. walking <laughs> around, yet um, they don't get. I'm not advocating to punish them by any means. Uh, I'm just saying the system is messed up. Broken. Broken. And, so, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you know also, truck drivers, especially when they have to haul gasoline or chemicals or dangerous, they have to have physicals and they have to they fall under pretty much the same guidelines from the federal government and from the state government mm-hmm. that, that commercial pilots do, mm-hmm. which is tougher than the ones that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know, but I am almost positive that if they have the same issues, they would, because they go, through, they go to the same doctors and go through the same process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, let the, me the just say, you so speak... I, there's many people that it affects their jobs if they do this. Sure. Well, let me say this to you. You speak so well. 
Um, at some point, you ought to think about taking this one on and um, going and talking to those who make those rules and laws and and helping advocate for others. It sounds like you're going to have difficulty fixing this for yourself, but I would get out there um, when you feel like you can move forward. And and honestly, I I hope things continue to go well for you from a personal standpoint. I'm so sorry that you. I'm gonna be a, okay. They, yeah, I'm gonna be okay. But it's just it's it. Look, one it's of broken. The dreams I had in life. My uh, you mentioned something about the let go, the relax thing. Do it just because you love to do it. That was flying. Yeah, that was the only thing I did. I don't fish. I don't drink. I don't. I fly. And now I can't. So, well, I can't like I did. I have now. I have options. A little the kites with the motor on them, with the ultralights. Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, I'm gonna have. I, I will have that in my life. But yeah, I lost. Yeah. I. But that means I have to fly by myself. I cannot share with my family anymore. I cannot yeah. share it with my friends. Yeah. I cannot take my family on trips anymore. I. I. I it's gone. It's, I'm so sorry. It's gone. So, yeah. Well, life is what it is. Yeah. But. Well, again, just, thank you for your courage. Giving you that insight to yep. why some people, there's there's some real-world consequences sometimes that are not worth it to some people. Yeah. I, so, I, I hear what you, you say. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Uh, again, thank you for your service. And, um, yeah, I, I would love to hear others' comments about this very thing because this is this is wrong. It's all wrong. And we've got to get that fixed. Okay, we're going to go to our next break. And when we come back, we have Sue um, waiting for us. We have open lines. Please join us, one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. You can send an e- email to family at mpbonline.org. We're talking about why people sometimes are not seeking help when they need it for their mental health issues. This is Relatively Speaking. We'll be right back. an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back and thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. This is Relatively Speaking and we're talking about mental health issues. One in five individuals have mental health issues, yet so many people just don't ask for help. And we've had some awesome callers. I really appreciate your calls. Um, And we are going to go back to the phones. We have Sue in Beaumont. Hi, Sue. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say I think the reason people don't seek help for mental illness is that there's such a stigma attached to it, you know. And we're still in the dark ages where mental illness is talking about it or doing something about it. I, I like to call it mental distress because you say mental illness. People say, oh, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I like that mental distress. I That's like good. that because you can go to a doctor, you go to your your family doctor, or whatever, and they'll uh, they want to check your blood sugar and your check on how your hypertension is doing and uh, check on your heart, whatever problems you, medical problems you have. But I've never had a doctor say, uh, how, "How are you doing? How are you holding up? How, how do you have any mental distress with all this?" I've never had a doctor or nurse practitioner ask me that. Why don't they why don't they include that in their routine medical checkups? Well, it should be actually. That that really should and it's being encouraged now and I will say that I have been to to the two docs that I go, my GYN and my internist for my wellness checks. They do they say, they start off with, how are you? Tell me how you're doing. What's going on with you? Now. That's great. Yeah. So you're right, Sue. And um, they should be. And I would encourage you, if you feel like you have a physician, I know Dr. Stewart says this a lot, 
on um, Southern Remedy on Wednesday. You know, if you're not happy, um, you really should seek someone who you feel like really cares about all of you. Because as I said at the beginning, it is the honest truth. Your physical health is affected by your mental health, your mental well-being. You can change blood pressure, heart rate, blood sugar. Um, if you diminish anxiety, that's that's a given. Um, you can you can change your metabolic rate if you can fix depression, so you can have better energy. So, can I make are, one more? Sure. I, I I personally think there. There, there is more mental distress, mental illness, if you call it that. At the, in the public at large, there is more mental illness than all other medical problems combined. Mm. I, everybody, I, I don't know one single person that hasn't got something going on in their life that would be considered a mental distress. Yeah, yeah. But yet, uh, it, it's not heard of. Right. But you may have heart, blood sugar, all kind of problems. No matter what other problems you've got, there's... Everybody, I think everybody out there has got some kind of mental something going on. Most uh, most likely at one time or another in their life. And, you know, I would dare say I have. You know, I think all of us at one time or another in, in our lives, when we have been through some stressful situation, some loss, um, some something that didn't go the way we wished it caused mental distress and maybe to the point that it really needed treatment and so many of us i mean our anonymous caller right before you sue you heard that um he he essentially now he he said he was doing great and feeling well and and all of that but he got punished for seeking help that's not okay because there's still a stigma against saying you have mental, any kind of mental. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for, for your call, Sue. And yes, if your doctor doesn't ask you how you're doing when you go in for a wellness check, I would suggest that you say, don't you want to hear how I'm doing, how whether or not mentally I'm doing okay, because I want to tell you. I would suggest you do that. I might get some calls on that one, but I don't think so. I think good docs do that. All right. Well, I am going to stay on the phone. I'm going to give the phone number out, though, because we do have open lines, one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. So call. We want to hear from you. All right. We have Deanna in Mobile. Hi, Deanna. Dina. Hi. Uh, <laughs> sorry. That's De okay. Dina. Hi. Um, I was just, um, okay, well, since I was uh, about 17, I've struggled with some severe PTSD, and um, I'm currently diagnosed with major depressive disorder, and I have uh, three young girls. Uh, my oldest one is just turned 10, <laughs> and um, I'm starting to recognize some signs of um, anxiety in her, like um uh, things that are clearly panic attack related for for various issues that mm -hmm. we go through or whatever, and um, I've sort of talked to her a little bit about um, you know how I have depression and that she needs to communicate with me or if she she can if she could communicate with, with me um, whenever she's feeling these things because I definitely want to get her help for them. Um, because I didn't <laughs> whenever I was young. Right. And, um, but I'm just, um, but also at the same time, I'm, I feel like my depression really prevents me from connecting fully to my children. And um, I feel, I don't know, I, it's just something I, <laughs> I just needed to kind of say out loud because I, I think a lot of mothers go through it that, you know, you get so bogged down with, all the intricacies of your life and raising children and um, and then for at some point there's a disconnect there where I feel like I'm on the other side of them. I'm trying so close, so hard right. to be close to them that I can't, right. that I can't feel the way I'm supposed to feel. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I just, I think mothers, especially uh, stay at home mothers um, like me, they, uh, there's a, a big need for mental help there because the isolation of right. 
being alone with your emotions all the time and then having to disconnect from them at the same time because you have to function and be a parent full time <laughs> right. is a, a big struggle. So, Dina, you you brought up several points. Often people with sig- significant mental health issues do um, – do inherit it. There's some genetic component to it for sure. Um, But you also mentioned something that you were not given help early in your life to learn how to cope with it, which we know epigenetics. So your environment, your surroundings, how you learn to be resilient can be very helpful for you later in life. So kudos to you for wanting to get your daughter some help. It sounds like right. you're very engaged. So yes. give yourself a break. You right. said you, <laughs> you allow yourself not to be the perfect mother. Nobody is, okay? Right. Right. Um, and if you're feeling down, it's okay to out loud say to your daughters that, um, you know, mommy's having a, a tough day, Um I'm feeling a little sad. I can't even put my finger on it, but I I just wanted to let you know it's nothing about you. I love you dearly. Just exactly. learn how to to out loud say those kinds of things. Yeah. Um the the other thing um Dina is I would start by perhaps looking for someone who can help maybe both of y'all, as you're going through working with your daughter on how to deal with her anxiety, panic attacks can be paralyzing. Right, Right, exactly. So maybe um, some of the mindfulness, centering yourself, the deep breathing, what does it take to calm you, think about something pleasant, all of those things to try to recenter yourself and learn how to stop that physical response to that feeling of panic because what if you can lower your heart rate then blood pressure comes down and the panic won't take (laughs) take you over so to speak exactly so I would encourage you I see you're from Mobile Um, I know there are resources in the Mobile area there's clear evidence that in children um, talk therapy, especially 10 and over, can right. be very, very helpful. Um, exactly. So, you know, I, I'd call the children's hospital there, see what kind of resources they have there, and um, and hope that helps. But, Dina, you called in. You are talking to your daughter, so give yourself credit where credit <laughs> is due, okay? I will do that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling. Have a good day. You too. Okay, I think we're going to skip our last break. I'm getting the nod from Michelle. So let's stay on the phone. We have Bill from uh, Murfreesboro. Um, hi, Bill. Oh, Meridian? I I can't read at the at a distance. Sorry. There it is. Um I made that up. I do know there is a Murfreesboro, right, Bill? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> okay, from Meridian. Uh, where they have the new lovely children's museum there. I don't know if you've been, but um it's lovely. I have not. Well, thanks for calling, Bill. Tell us what your thoughts are today. Oh, uh, I was just going to bring up my experience with mental health. Uh, I have a condition called dysthymia, Mm -hmm. uh, which is low-grade chronic depression punctuated by periods of severe depression. Uh, I have constant suicidal thoughts, although most of them are not serious, Uh, but during those bad times it can get kind of dangerous for me i've been dealing with it for a long time Mm -hmm. uh, but i've had years of therapy i've tried just about every antidepressant that there is but dysthymia is notoriously difficult to treat Mm -hmm. Um, so now i'm reluctant to call anyone because I'm, i'm to the point where i feel like there's really not any help for me um but then read something recently about uh, how the psychedelic research Mm -hmm. seems to be pointing toward more 
ability to deal with difficult to deal with mm -hmm. depressions and just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. Oh, Bill, please don't give up on this because, yes, our our psychiatric medications are getting better and better. And, yes, you um, there has been some really interesting research on the psychedelic drugs and um, some ongoing research projects out there right now. I would encourage you to go online and look at the National Institute of Mental Health and um, Google that because I, I know there are some ongoing studies. You might also call um, our the University of Mississippi Medical Center, our uh, psychiatry department has been involved in, I don't know that they're involved in any of that, but um, they probably could help link you to what's going on as far as that is going. We have a wonderful um, department chair, Dr. Scott Rogers, at um, in the Department of Psychiatry and... Um, I would I would encourage you to reach out and um and and ask for for help in looking into that. The other thing too, Bill, is is there are what we found is um drugs are better. There there are some combinations sometimes that help. So um there are some avenues out there. I don't know how long it's been since you have have sought help uh, with a good psychiatrist who is really up to date on all medicines, but I would encourage you to do that. Um, all right. I appreciate you calling. I think it's it's a, a step forward, and and so um, yeah, like I said, there's really good research out there. Uh, going on, most of that is in in the study form. But maybe you could even get into a study. It might be worth a try. I, uh, you know, I'm of the age now where uh, I seriously doubt that there will be any authorized use of any of those things, uh, psychedelic or otherwise. That uh, I won't live long enough to see those come into mainstream you might be surprised but, um things well, yeah and i've got a lot of health issues i'm mm -hmm. not going to live that much longer <laughs> anyway but uh it's uh i would like for my last years to be you know better than the previous yeah. ones yeah and so uh, right. i'm willing to try but i don't want to go down the same rabbit hole yeah you know i feel like i'm beating a dead horse with a lot of those things well, yeah, to do the same, to revisit the same thing over and over is certainly not something that you'd want to do. But but to but to check and see what's out there now and have someone who is really up to date, like I said at the University of Mississippi, uh, we've got several people who are doing ongoing work and study. So, um, would you uh, tell me that website again? The University of Mississippi. What was it? The University of Mississippi uh, Medical Center. Bill, if you will email me at s buttress, it's b u t t r o s s at u m c dot e d u, I will connect you. Okay. 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 All right. I All appreciate right. your help. Well, thank thank you. thank you for your call. And I enjoy your program. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you called. Thanks. All right. Well, golly, what a uh, like I always say, I'm almost speechless. Um, our callers make the show, and we've had some incredibly um, awesome callers who have helped us move through some some tough stuff. And you know, I think we've pointed out that our our system needs some work. We need to do a better job. We need to get rid of the stigma. And understand that mental health is mental health, just like physical health. It is our body. And our brain is the most important organ that we have because it tells all the rest of our body what to do. So we need to take good care of it um, so that we can take care of all of us. So 
Thank you again, listeners, and um, and I hope everyone has an awesome and wonderful and safe Memorial weekend. Um, water safety, do not get in the water by yourself. If you are in on, along the Gulf Coast, please remember uh, waves can be um, can just pull you under. Make sure you always have a buddy, and if you can't swim, put on a life preserver, please, and learn to swim. All right. (laughs) I really appreciate everybody. If you'd like to hear this show again or any past episodes, you can listen to the podcast on your favorite podcast app by searching Southern Remedy, Relatively Speaking. This show is a production of MPB Think Radio, engineered by Michelle McAdoo. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress, and I hope you'll join us next Tuesday at 11 for Relatively Speaking and that you'll stay tuned for NPR's Here and Now, coming up next right here on 